Uh, drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Now, this is one that we've been talking about for many years, and we finally got the rulemaking complete. And the rulemaking puts into place a process so that we get information on all the commercial driver's license holders that test positive for drugs or the misuse of alcohol. Right now, we've got that vulnerability that someone could test positive, and rather than addressing their substance abuse issues, they simply change jobs, don't tell the new employer that they tested positive, take the pre employment drug test, and come up with the drug pre-employment drug test, and they're back out on the road again. With this clearinghouse, we will capture all the positive test results and refusals so that we can determine whether that individual has seen the substance abuse professional and completed the return to duty process. So that's a good tool for the agency to have and for all the employers to have so that you can be sure that the person that you're hiring or the person that's on your payroll has not tested positive somewhere and failed to take care of those substance abuse issues. And we hope to have all the information technology things in place by January 2020 so that that point will have it up and running. And as far as some of the specifics, the employers would report the positive test results. Employers must also report the actual DUI citation. So if you know that you've got a driver that got cited for driving under the influence, you're supposed to report that to the clearinghouse so that we can follow up. And we'll get some of the reports from the laboratories as well. And as far as searching, all the employers would do a pre-employment search before you hire a new driver, and you would do an annual check for the drivers that are currently on your payroll as far as these commercial driver's license holders. And this would be especially helpful if you've got a commercial driver's license holder that's working for more than one employer. So if that person tests positive for the other employer, now you have a way that you would find out about it when you do your annual query of that CDL holder. And as far as retention, this is another controversial item. That basically, once the person has completed all the return to duty process and come up clean, then the five-year clock starts counting down before we remove that information from the clearinghouse. If the person never sees the substance abuse professional and takes care of their substance abuse issues, and it remains there indefinitely so that everyone would have a record that we've got an issue with this person and that nobody should be putting them out there on the road, All of those who are trying to get their commercial driver's license for the first time or upgrade to a Class A or Class B CDL have got to take the mandatory entry-level driver training program from a training provider that's on our training registry and for individuals who are trying to get their hazardous materials endorsement, passenger or school bus endorsement, they're also covered by this rule making that they would have to undergo the mandatory federal training for entry-level drivers. And the training program, we've got the course materials for Class A, for Class B, the hazardous materials, and passenger and school bus. <laughs> so all those folks who go through a rigorous program to make sure that they are capable of operating these vehicles safely. And even though the rule doesn't specify the exact minimum number of hours for Class A, we estimate that it would take about 30 hours to cover all the mandatory maneuvers as far as the behind the wheel portion. And for Class B, we think that they could, a really good student could probably get through that in about 15 hours. So again, it doesn't specify the minimum number of hours, but just our estimate as we were doing the estimated cost and benefits of rulemaking, it would be about 30 hours for Class A, 15 for Class B. And one of the things that we had involved in the previous entry-level driver training rulemakers that we worked on, establishing a training provider registry. So that each of these entities, whether they're big or small, would register with the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration to let us know that they're trying to do training, which classes of CDL they're doing training for, and which of the endorsements they're covering, and this information will be available to the public. And in CDL, or even one of the things we did late last year was to publish the final rule to make it easier for veterans to make the transition into driving in the commercial vehicle industry. They said at the time which a former military personnel could apply for the CDL skills test waiver, that's basically the road test. Prior to this rulemaking, they were limited to about 90 days or so to apply for the waiver, and if they waited too long, then they couldn't get the waiver and they actually had to go through the formal CDL skills test. But we recognize that for some of these individuals that they may make the decision later instead of earlier, so let's just change the rule to to one year to apply for the waiver for the CDL skills test. That'll make it a lot easier for them. And the second thing we did, 
wants to make it easier for them to apply to the CDL so they're active duty and you can apply for the CDL in the state where you are stationed as opposed to having to return to the state where you're legal domicile. So that'll make it a lot easier. And then the two state driver licensing agencies work together to process all the paperwork so that the state where you're domiciled would actually issue a commercial driver's license document and they would just send it over to the state where you are actually stationed. National Registry of Certified Medical Examiners. And this is a program that we set up a few years ago. And what it does is it establishes minimum training and testing requirements for all the healthcare professionals that do the DOT physical. We have complete confidence that if they're licensed by the state, they are competent, capable healthcare professionals, but they have to take training on FMCSAs, physical qualification standards, and pass the test to verify that they fully understand those standards and that they will apply them in a uniform and consistent manner every single time they do an examination of a truck and bus driver. And they also have to take refresher training every five years and recertification testing every 10 years. So we want to make sure that all of these healthcare professionals really understand what they're certifying when they hand out a DOT medical card.